Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, lately, we've been doing some really spicy, fun, different things, and today is no different. Today on the podcast, I have Ruin Willow. She is an erotica author, an erotica narrator, and a podcaster of the Oh Fuck Yeah with Ruin Willow podcast, where she talks about sex and erotica. And so today we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about what in the world, how do you get into this particular genre? Um, what's it like to be an erotica author and narrator and all things erotica today? Ruin. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Say hi to everybody um, and we'll get started. Well, hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to be on the podcast. And I have had quite the interesting past couple of years. I started getting into things erotica and erotic in about 2019. And my first foray into it was totally on a whim. I started doing something on Twitter and it was I was creating little snippets of erotica. I was doing audios and it just kept growing. I did a, you know, started a website with stories and then people kept saying, I love your voice. You should do something more with your voice. So then I started to do more and more with my voice. And then someone asked me to start narrating books for them. And I did that. And then people were asking me to do a podcast and before all this started, I should back up and say I was writing romance under my real name, and I just kind of wanted something a little bit spicier, something a little bit more real, you know, like, you know, that had sex in it. Sex is a real part of relationships. And so I really wanted that spicy addition to the romance. And so the books that I've written before were actually young adult romances, so with like teenagers, so much more sweet romance. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing more erotica because I really wanted the reality of sex and the spiciness. And I love writing about sex. I love writing sex scenes. And so then back to the podcast, people kept asking me, why don't you start a podcast? And I'm like, oh, I can't add that in. Are you kidding me? And so one day I'm like, well, why not? So <laughs> I did. And I'm coming up on my third season. We'll be starting in January. So I'll be two years podcasting. And it's just been really fun for me. I really enjoy it. I love writing across different subgenres of erotica as well. Everything from, you know, uh, lesbian to heterosexual stuff to orgies, you know, like I'm all over the fucking place, you know? <laughs> oh, can I swear? Oh, please. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I think please I do. Just... <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. So, I yeah, think I, I have a butt a... plug in my, over my right <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> oh my God, you do. Oh, I love it. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, did you ever see that clip? There was some like famous news person and they were showing her and it went, it went viral and she had a dildo on her bookshelf and it was showing, and she was like, you know, totally this, um, vanilla person, you know, yeah. this person persona. <laughs> That's so amazing. Um, yeah, really. I, uh, I hope one day to have a podcast sponsor on our show that has sex toys. And so yes. I'm in conversations with one now. And so maybe one day, instead of all my like <laughs> woo things behind me, these will all be sex toys. And that'll be really fun. <laughs> one I thing it. I think we should mention is yes, we intentionally are not showing ruin space because mm -hmm. she has a day job with paying clients who have no idea that she is this erotica author, narrator, incredibly sexy woman. And so if you, and we'll put the link in the bio for her Instagram page, but when you see her Instagram page, it's very much the same. It's, there's no face. You just see her fabulous boobs all over the page. <laughs> so today you get to look at her boobs the entire time. We're giving you full permission to look. <laughs> and um, yeah, then you get to see my face. So that's what we're doing yes. today, right? Yeah. Maybe someday I'll show my face. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's, you know, it's a possibility. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want. So uh, the first thing that comes to mind for me, well, let me ask you one more basic, like, you know, let's set the baseline question. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people that are listening are probably like, 
who is this lady? Like, I, I always like to say, like, <laughs> we're normal people that enjoy mm-hmm. sex and have sex in our, in our conversations and in our podcasts. Like, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a business owner of a very vanilla company where we help people sell on Amazon and Walmart. Like I have a partner, mm-hmm. I have two dogs and I have a house and I live in a set, like I live in a subdivision. I'm pretty boring. My neighbors right. probably think I'm like a soccer mom. Um, <laughs> do you, are you open to sharing like anything personal that kind of level sets that you're pretty normal? Oh, I'm definitely pretty normal. I live in a suburb in a house and I am, yeah, nobody who knows me would guess that this is what I do. And it would be probably quite shocking to me people because a lot of people have opinions about sex and it's all taboo and it's, oh no, we can't talk about that. So uh, people would be quite shocked. Yes. And that that's another reason why not only from the business side, I just, there's so much judgment out there and not that I really care. I mean, you know, I'm in my forties. I really don't give a fuck what people think about me. I'm doing what I want, but I still don't know that I want to deal with the whole judgment in my face thing. So yeah, I, right now I keep them separate. Yep. I understand. Okay. So now we can get into the juicy stuff. <laughs> so I've, I, I love smut. In fact, you can't see, but like mm. this whole bookshelf over here is like all my sexy romance novel things. Nice. And I have more underneath this cupboard. If you open the door. <laughs> and I, I always wonder, so like Nora Roberts is one of my favorite authors mm. and she can get pretty smutty. Like mm. I, I'm surprised by like right. how detailed she is in her sex scenes. And although there's usually like only one or two per book, you know, like it, it, the, the build and then you finally get, mm. you know, you know how to write for women, what we want. Yeah, you yeah. can't just mm-hmm. get right to it. You got to build it. Right. <laughs> right. I often wonder, cause Nora Roberts, for example, is older. She looks like a chain smoker. She's not attractive <laughs> in any way. She's a got great it. writer. Uh-huh. I'm like, does this woman have a really active sex life or something? Like, how does she know how to write these things? How can she do such a detailed scene? And if you're doing stuff like orgies and girl on girl and like probably guy on guy mm-hmm. and like whatever you're writing, right. can uh-huh. you explain yes. to us a little bit about do you have to have these personal experiences in order to be able to write them? Or like, where do you get your inspiration from? I do not think you need to have personal experiences. You need to know stuff about it. You need to maybe have watched it, but you have to have an imagination. Like I always explain it this way. Stephen King's not a serial killer, right? Right. Exactly. But he can write serial killer characters. So it's kind of the same thing. And, And people do see it a little bit differently with sex. And they think you have to experience it. And I always think, well, Stephen King isn't going around murdering people like a clown. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's it's a part of yeah. it's a part of being a writer to be able to create real situations that you maybe have never been in. Think of all the sci-fi out there. Nobody's been to space and you know eating donuts on the moon. You know whatever. You know yeah. it's it's not things that people have necessarily done, but they have to, like you said, be able to create the story do the build up, make it realistic, make it interesting. Mm. You have to be, you have to be able to write, to be able to write about things, especially to be able to write about things you've never done. Mm. Oh, I bet. So I wonder again with authors, if inspiration like comes from the heavens and like you wake up and you're like, (laughs) I have the best sex scene ever. Or are you like sitting at the coffee shop and you're sipping your latte and you look over and you see maybe like a couple or a hot guy and there's a pretty girl and you're like, it crafts itself in front of you or like, how does it work? Well, I would say all of those things, I would say all of those things have happened to me, but, but I just constantly get stories. Like this is one thing I like to do on my podcast. Also, I will sit down with just a little bit of description, like maybe what someone looks like, their names, and maybe a sex act. And then I will literally just create a story off the top of my head. And it's not hard for me to do. So I do like, I call it erotic improv, you know, and, and I've taken those stories and actually turned them and edited them and turned them into a particular book. I've done that several times now and it's really fun. But so for me, things just hit me. I can be inspired by what I see on maybe on a porno, what I see a person. Sometimes I might see a person and I like a particular thing about them or they're, they're char- so a character develops in my head just from seeing them. Um, someone I might by being scrolling social media and I'll see something sexy that someone else wrote and poof, something will pop in my head. Stuff pops in my head all the time, literally. <laughs> I love that. Do you ever write series? 
Yes. Yes. And you you love the characters enough that you're like, this Mm -hmm. needs to play out for a while. Yes. And I'm doing one series right now where it's the um, day of play. It's the sex challenge series. So it's a couple that is, they're older, they're in their second marriages and they're doing a day of play. So his suggestion was that they try to stimulate each other, make each other try to come with sex games all day. So the first one, they're in the kitchen doing these sex games. And then the second one, they're in the grocery store. So they got some exhibitionism going on. And then now they were just at the car wash. And so that's the third book. They're little books. Um, Eventually, it will be a full six book novella series, which then I will also combine into a longer novel. And so it'll be available as the individuals or as the full entire book. So that's been really fun for me. And I've really enjoyed creating them. I, I have a, I have too many series going. I was, <laughs> I got to keep up with all of them. <laughs> They're fun to do though. What do you spend the majority of your time doing? Because you have so many different buckets. Like I know we both have podcasts mm-hmm. and that yeah. takes a good chunk of time. It you're does. writing, you're narrating mm-hmm. and being paid to narrate. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're coming up with these stories in your mind. So I'm assuming you need quite a bit of space to like develop out, or maybe Mm -hmm. you don't, maybe it free flows out of your fingers as you type and write them up. Um, I'm curious, like, what does a day in your life look like? Well, it is all very different, but I will write very quickly. I'm very prolific. Like I could sit down and write 4,000 words in a morning and that's not hard for me to do. Mm -hmm. And but I, you know, since I do so many different things, the things is most consuming would be the the audio book editing. The audio editing is the most consuming thing. And, you know, eventually I may hone into focusing more on one or the other. Right now I'm kind of just trying to do everything as much as possible. But yeah, I would say the editing takes up more of my time. Writing, I write pretty quickly and I edit pretty quickly and then I shove it off to my editor and then I publish it. So, you know, if I were to write the fastest I ever wrote a book, somebody asked me this question (laughs) um, under my real name, the fastest I ever wrote a book was two weeks. And I was writing like fucking mad. Like I wrote (laughs) so much. And that book was so like in my brain, I would wake up in the morning with all these ideas and I would like rush down and, and type them out. And so that's the fastest I ever wrote a book was two weeks. And that's pretty fucking insane, really. I mean, <laughs> that's a lot, but I didn't do too? much else. Like, was it like the best book you ever wrote? Cause it just free flowed out or worse? Well, or? I, I loved it. That one is still yeah. sitting with the publisher waiting to be published and hopefully one day it will appear, but they've, they've been hit too by COVID. A lot of publishers did. So they're kind of just slowly getting back into publishing. So some of my wow. books are sitting in limbo, unfortunately, while they're trying to get back on their feet. So that sucks. Yeah, it's weird how it actually hit them. And a lot of publishers closed. And one of the the printing companies even closed. And and mm. what was so weird is that people were starting to read more, right? Yeah, like, exactly. I, what, I read came... literally all these books on my shelf and in there right. during COVID, all of them. <laughs> but it was like it was like shifted. So like it hit them at first and it was enough to to make some of them close their doors. And then, of mm-hmm. course, it swelled and everybody was reading, but it was too late for some of them. God, my favorite thing is to find a new author that I mm. have liked. To, and I always I seem to find them in the young adult section. Like I'm embarrassed oh, to yeah. say mm-hmm. I do love a good young adult <laughs> romance. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do love dirty, too. So like then I'm like, OK, I need something a little bit more steamy. That's totally but, me. Um, I get it. <laughs> right. I'm like, oh, this is really sweet. Now I'm all revved up and I'm an adult. And I can do something about it. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I love to dig in and find an author. Um, and I love that, you know, on all of these like um, I wanted to say books a million. Are they even around anymore? But on all these book selling sites or even on Amazon where I buy most of my books, I love mm-hmm. that you can follow the author. And then as soon yes. as a new book comes out, actually Alexa is really good about going like, hey, Jen, Nora Roberts just came out oh. with a new book. Do you want to buy it? I'll put it in your cart. I'm like, yes, nice. please. I like, I dig in deep with the authors that I love. I don't have a really wide assortment. I have maybe five that I really like and mm-hmm. follow. And then every time something's new, I'm like, yes, pre-order pre-order surprise me and my so I'm assuming that people do that with you how many books Mm -hmm. have you written that have been published now do you know um oh gosh let's see it's so hard because I have them all over the place and then I also have audio books in different places so I don't even know if I could say but maybe um including audio books I don't know 20 but some of them are short too so um I love a good short story. 
That's fun. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of people like these short erotic stories where they're under yeah. 10,000 words because they're just they they can read them quick and I'm also on Medium which a lot of people like. They like the really yeah. short like 10 minute reads on Medium yeah. and that's I have several stories up on there so that's another way that that I can that I can get paid too because every time someone reads my story on there I do get a kickback. So it's a gr- another income stream for authors is to publish on medium. I would love to check that out. Like, and if I think about, um, like what does the, what is the client, the customer, the reader, what do they want or the Mm -hmm. watcher, the viewer. And I think about like, nobody wants an hour long porn scene. Typically, right, I mean, right, right. That's a long fucking time, unless you're looking yes. for variety, and then you're like fast forwarding to certain scenes that, like, you're okay. I, now I want to see this particular thing happen. At mm. least you get some options with like 45 minute to an hour porn, but that's right. a fucking long time to watch. And typically, it doesn't take mm-hmm. that long to get off. So I would exactly. imagine with like your saucy stories, people are looking for like. I want something titillating, like on my lunch break. Yes. I want to like read something that uh, that that turns me on or gets me prepared for what I'm going to do that night or whatever. And you don't need an hour or you don't need a book. Right. 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 And if you are going to do a book, I'd say you have more story in it. You know what I mean? Like you're going to have sure. sex scenes like like Nora, you know, you're going to yeah. have more story. You may have the hot sex scene in there, but you're going to have more story generally. But you can still find smut out there that's not like that. I mean, you know, there's a wide range of subgenres in erotica. There's, you know, there's smut, which is, you know, mostly sex. Then there's like erotica and then there's erotic romance. So yeah. there's a, there's a gradient, you know, and, you, you know, I've written across the gradient. And what what does get to be hard about that, if you don't focus on one thing, then if someone likes a particular, like say someone likes my erotic romance, then they read a smut, then they're like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, then they're like, oh, wait, you know, so people who aren't open minded Uh. (laughs) might be like, give you a bad review on one book and an awesome review on another book. So it is what it is. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that was going to be one of my questions. I have two. I'll okay. ask this first question, then I have a business question because my business mind is always going. So my <laughs> first question on this is, um, I guess, first I'll start with my own personal experience. And I, okay. if you look at the sexual blueprints by Jaya and Ian that yes. are out there, love them. Yes. I'm a shapeshifter, which means I like okay. everything. Uh-huh. So I love um, audio erotica. I'm a subscriber mm-hmm. to Quinn. I don't know if anyone's looked at Quinn, Q-U-I-N-N. It's fabulous. Ruin, are you on there? Do you have anything? I don't even it? know what Quinn is. So now I have to make oh a note. God. What's Quinn? <laughs> it's an, it's an, it's an audio erotica app. And they oh, do have yeah, yeah, yeah. written erotica okay. and they have audio erotica, um, sure, sure. but it's so many genres. So I like that I can get in there and being shape shifty. I kind of want different mm. scenes and different things. So yeah, I yeah. might be like, um, I want like a dirty story before bed. I want a night, a night story. Somebody needs to right. tell me a night yes. story. So I'm like, I've got that going <laughs> on. Right. Yes, and then yes. they've got, um, they've got like, you know, girl on girl stuff. They've got, mm-hmm. um, I've been getting more into kink and BDSM. So they've got yes. some scenes like that and it's it's, it's like super hot. So I love mm. to hear porn. Um, yes. And I think it's a, if you have never done it and you take away your sight, it's yes. a very different way of consuming um, and, and, and having kind of like reading where everything mm-hmm. goes on in your mind, you get to paint the characters in your head and you get to paint yes. the scene and you get to, it's a different way of your body consuming it than just your eyeballs. Right. Yes. So I love that. I, I fell in love with um, literotica in college. I had a, a oh, college yes. student that was next to me one day and we were talking about like literotica.com. I don't even know if that's up anymore, but it was it like is. the first way. <laughs> it, it was like the first way to get to read erotica yeah, and yeah, it's, sexy mm. porn scenes back in the day. Yep. So um, Quinn does have that. I'm sure Ruin, you've got a ton of different resources for that as well. There's actually watching porn. So there's like all these different mediums and I'm curious Which one's like most popular? Do you have any idea of what's emerging? Do people kind of like all of them or do most of people like just one thing? Can you tell us a little bit more about the space? I think that, you know, um, erotic audiobooks are exploding more just for that reason. Like you said, you know, just a different experience. So from what what I hear and see, uh, audiobooks are really doing well. Um, For instance, 
even Spotify is now selling audiobooks. And I have um, four of my audiobooks on there. So that's really exploding. And I think what also is nice about that is you could listen to it with a partner. You mm. could listen to it while you're doing other things. We're, very, we're all very busy. So that is the beauty of audiobooks. Um, you can listen to it on a plane. Yes. You my can. partner is reading this anime book that is not for children that has oh, yes. these sexual <laughs> yeah, scenes yeah. in it. And he was uh -huh. like, bringing it on the airplane. And I was like, oh my God, babe, you can't like, there's kids. Like you've got to be really careful about right. reading this. And yeah. then I was watching one of the movies on my, I just got back from Hawaii and I had eight oh, hours yeah, yeah, in an right. airplane uh -huh. and I couldn't believe there were mature things on the, and I watched one of them. Oh, I yes, watched some yes. girl on girl movie and, um, mm -hmm. on the airplane and oh, I was yeah. getting really nervous because I was like there's kids on here and like they can <laughs> see right. my screen because I can see other people's uh -huh. screen I love the audiobooks and the and the audio porn uh in your mm -hmm. ears because when you're in a situation like that and you do want to consume mm -hmm. that kind of material no one can hear but you which is exactly nice. yeah. exactly they're not going to see your book cover either because some of the book covers are pretty racy you know what I mean you know you don't want to like wrap it up in paper and read it on the book or in the plane <laughs> yeah like a perv. Yeah. I know, right? Many people look ears, at you no like you're. They look at you like you're weird, but you know they probably read it in their own room. So I don't know why they look at you oh, weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so the most really... common would be what? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, you. I think that audiobooks are becoming bigger and bigger. I really okay. do. Um, you know, I don't think you'll ever get away from people who like to read and, you know, hold a book in their hands or read because, you know, in, it's true reading on your phone, people aren't going to see it. There's no book cover to see. So I think the digital stuff, the audio books and the ebooks are, are more and more popular. However, authors make more money on the actual copy of the book. So they're going to make more money that way. So there is a, there is a drawback to doing more digital things. You're going to make less as an author. And that leads me to question number two, which is the business <laughs> yeah. side of me out of all the things that you do, mm -hmm. what brings in, and you don't have to say you particularly, but in yeah. this space, what, what is the most revenue generating thing that you do? And like down to like, least if you had to like categorize it, because some of the people listening may be like, I would love to explore this side of me. I know personally, mm -hmm. I've started writing some literatica. I've written stories. Oh, sure. I've yeah. never done anything with it. They're private. Like I've just, or I've mm -hmm. done it with a partner. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great way to sex. You can kind of build a story together. But if there's right. someone listening, like I kind of want to explore this space, but I have no idea where to start. I have no idea what kind of money I could make. Like, could you explain more of the business side of the space? Yes. And I would say someone getting into it, the easiest way you're going to get into it is, is writing books and getting in that way. If you're going to get into audiobooks, you've got a whole mountain of things to learn. You need a sound room. You need equipment, you, you know, microphone, interface. You need software and you need to learn how to edit. And it, it you know, I've edited now over 200 podcast episodes and um, almost 40 audiobooks. And I have now have a good experience at it. But the other thing about audiobooks is, you know, some people are going to pay you by the hour, but you have to really build that. So it takes a lot of time to do audio stuff. But writing, you can sit down, write something, hire an editor, and publish it in a very short amount of time. And it does take a while to build, but I would say the best way to do it would be to write and, you know, get on something like Medium where you can get paid. Um, Literatica, you're not going to get paid, but it's exposure. Like I've had, I only have, I think like one or two stories on Literatica, but people have found me. My advice is to get across as many fucking platforms as you possibly can. Like I'm on everything from Frolic Me, which is an ethical porn site that I write stories for, all the way up to Medium. I'm on, what am I on? Like 12 social media platforms. I'm on Amazon. I do audiobooks. I have a podcast. Spread yourself everywhere as you possibly can, and things will start to build like a web. I love that. Um, I love that you mentioned ethical porn, and I want to get back to that in one second, but mm. I wanted to ask one more thing and kind of double click on the book thing. So okay. I know a lot of people self-publish. You've mentioned mm -hmm. that you have a publishing company. What do mm -hmm. you recommend and why? 
I would recommend starting your own. It, it isn't really that expensive to start your own LLC and it protects you. Um, it protects you legally. I'm, I'm not all like a official knowing this stuff, but, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it, it protects you that way. And it, it, puts everything together and everywhere you publish, then it's all linked. Like for instance, if you do self-publish on Amazon, it might say independently published. Well, Mm -hmm. that's not a name. If someone knows your name, like mine is Pink Infinity Publishing LLC, they're they're joined together. They're grouped, you know, and and eventually I do have a a website domain purchased for Pink Infinity Publishing. I just haven't, I don't have it live yet. Mm -hmm. Um, But I would suggest doing that and lumping it all together and it can, it can grow. I mean, Mm -hmm. if you're just sitting there on Amazon independently published, oh, you know, then you look like everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's a distinct brand if you use a name. Okay. Um, and what was your other question? Did I, did I answer? Yeah. Why, um, why use a publisher versus independently published these days? Oh, yes. Well, you and I have tried using publishers I've published or sent to them, but they're very, very specific. And so I got to the point where I was writing something for a specific publisher. They want a certain thing. And if they reject it, here you have this story that may or may not work for other publishers. And I got tired of trying to modify my stuff. And I, I so I started to do it on my own. And I eventually will go back to trying to publish to a publisher. I do a publisher under my real name. Um, but with erotica, it's really tough. They're very, very picky and you can only say certain words. You can only do certain things. You Mm -hmm. have to say things a certain way. They like have all this criteria Mm -hmm. and they're very picky. So it gets to be a lot to create a full, I mean, you create a full story or book and if they decide they don't want it, well, you may struggle to find another home for that within a publisher. Yeah, because this they sounds are so very much like what I would tell my brick and mortar and brands that we're building. Mm. Um, my company helps brands sell on Amazon and Walmart, and we deal mm-hmm. with, you know, you know, the actual company. And a lot of them are small to mid-sized companies, which is mm-hmm. you and just me, yes. other, <laughs> right? All these other people that are trying to build something. And what we're finding is the big clunky way of selling yourself or selling Mm -hmm. your brand or the product Mm -hmm. that you've created for you. It's, you know, it may be a digital product or it might be a book. Um, It's all about direct to the consumer these days, like getting into Walmart to sell something is almost impossible. Getting into Amazon and selling things is really unaffordable these days. And the consumer is really open to being scrappy and finding you where you are, as long as you show up and you tell them where to buy your things. So what I'm hearing is fucking show up everywhere, grow your brand, grow your following. And then back to what I was saying earlier, my own consumer personality is I want to go deep with you. Like Ruin, I want to read every fucking thing you write. I want to be on your email list. I want to know what's next. I want you to tease me with the next characters. And you do this. You do all of this Mm -hmm. through like uh, the little podcast episodes. I was just listening to the latest one that you published this morning that was about um, the the husband and wife that both passed and the wife had written this. And so you were doing a tribute scene, like Mm. I think in a mall where there were this lesbian scene. Yes, 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 yes. And so you tease us with this. And so if you guys are interested in this kind of a concept that we're talking about, go follow Ruin because she does a really good job of engaging and teasing and letting you know when things are happening (laughs) and like how to buy the next thing she's putting out there. And this is a great model for you, whether you're a brand selling a physical thing or a person wanting to launch something, um, or I have a lot of service people in my world, other coaches in my world. And they're like, how do I get clients? This is fucking how you do it. Yes, you show yes. up, you create content, you tease it, you drip it, you sell it. Right. And I want to mention two two sites that I use to publish, which are just ginormous. Okay, so there's draft to digital. When you publish to draft to digital, they will publish it across the board. Like you can Ooh. get Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, Smashwords, Apple, Google Play, Vivlio, I mean on and on, right? And if you do through draft to digital, you can you can they will spread you out across all of those publishers, right? Mm-hmm. So that's huge. And right now, Smashwords is doing a end of your sale, which I, which I guess this is going to publish or this is going to go live after that. But they do an amazing thing too, where the end of the year, they give away, they let authors participate in giving away free books to grow. And so it's called the Smashwords end of your sales. Right now they're free. 
And you, I mean, like 97,000 ebooks are free on Smashwords wow. right now. And I have, I don't know, maybe six or seven books there. And then the other one that I just am absolutely loving, which is I'm pretty new to, I just started publishing with them. It's called Find Away Voices and they do audiobooks. And that is also how you can get audiobooks on Spotify, but they too will publish it all across all these different platforms. And yeah, you may not be able to get into Walmart, but you can get on Kobo Walmart online. Can you say the name of the company one more time? Um, find a way voices. Find so draft to digital voices. is like the, um, the books, but they've actually got a gateway into find a way voices that you can do through them, or you can just have your own account on find a way voices. This is amazing. Thank you for all this information. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. So what <laughs> other self-publishing tips do you have? Um, don't stop. Don't give up. Okay. Keep going. If you, just do like a book or two and then like, ah, nobody's buying it. It's hard to sell stuff. It's hard to sell erotica. Yeah. You can't stop. And I've heard people say as much as having 20 to 30 books before you click, you know, and everybody's path is different, mm -hmm. but that's a lot of content. And mm -hmm. I write pretty quickly and I don't even have that many books up yet. Right. So it takes a while. So you can't stop. Don't give I up. I love that. That's um, my best tip. <laughs> I want to say the same thing is true if you're selling a product or you're selling yourself. So mm. I have invested tens of thousands of dollars into my own brand, like mm -hmm. my the brand of Jennifer Kayla Ruskin. I have colors, I have fonts, I have a website that is very expensive that I've created. I have photo mm -hmm. shoots. I have years of content that I've created. I've paid people to help grow my social media. And yes. every single piece of that was in preparation for when this gets big. I have made right. millions of dollars over the years because I don't stop. I keep going. I keep reinventing yes. myself. I keep launching the new thing. And I went from selling retail products and helping grow brands to now being a sex and relationship coach. And you think I stop with that? No, I keep going. I keep putting out content. I keep talking about this stuff and I keep getting yep. clients. So I love how what you're telling us and teaching us about erotica you know, like it, it's the same across yes, everything yes. that you're trying to build. It's the mm -hmm. same methodology. And the other thing I want to say is expect mm -hmm. bad reviews, expect people okay. to not like you. Okay. You know what? <laughs> and I think about this and I think, you know what, there's people who don't like St Stephen King, people yeah. who don't like Nora. So you yeah. cannot stop what you're doing and be hurt because yes. someone doesn't like what you're doing because everyone's going to get negative reviews. I mean, look at anything. Is there anything that everyone loves? No. no. Don't take it so personal. You're not pizza. Isn't that the... <laughs> <laughs> I always say, you know, you're not for everyone. I have the same right. thing with clients. They get, they're real mm -hmm. precious about the things they create, you know, and they're yeah, like yeah. really offended when someone doesn't like their crunchy, you know, granola that's grain free right. or whatever. And yep. I'm like, it's okay. You're not for everyone, but exactly. you're for the people that you are for will find you. If yes. you show up authentically, you, if you right. show up in your writing style, that's, that may be very different, but maybe for a very specific grouping of people, they will right. find you and they will yes. go deep with you and they will buy all 20 of your books. I was a huge Rachel Hollis <laughs> fan for a <laughs> long time. I, I don't even know if you know who she is, but oh, I do. Her, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Her and her husband were, were huge in the relationship and coaching and especially women empowerment in business space. They got divorced mm -hmm. and their whole lives kind of blew up, but Right. When I fell in love and found her, I realized that she had written these nonfiction books like five, 10 years ago, and nobody yeah, wow. knew who she was then. And right. then all of a sudden, all her fame and her millions of followers all went back and bought all her old books. And then we were like, yep. she's a great writer. And then we went and we bought her self-help books. And we, right. so I love what you're saying. Like, don't stop, keep writing, keep self-publishing. And I'm sure mm -hmm. if you make an ebook, the cost is very minimal. It's it is. more just it is. your time. Oh, and this is a beautiful thing about draft to digital I mean, they're just amazing. And they just acquired Smashwords. So Smashwords used to be separate. Um, they have a software in there that all you need to do is create. Um, I mean, I, I will say, though, you should pay an editor. And there are some cheap editors out there, but have it edited professionally, even if they're a small little editor that's, you know, not very expensive. But all you need is go on Canva and make a cover, right? They have a specific size, I tell you. And then you upload a word document and they have software that turns it in formats it into an ebook unbelievable for you so easy. unbelievable 
that then you know you and, and before I was doing this, I was paying people on Fiverr, which I still might do if I only publish on Amazon. But I was paying people to format my eBooks on Fiverr, right? Mm-hmm. Well, once I joined Draft to Digital, I'm like, oh my gosh, they have a program built in that will create and format eBooks for you from a Word document. So you just took that fee right out of making a book. I know, <laughs> isn't it? And you can pay people to make covers for you, but you can make them yourself on Canva. So literally the only thing you'd be paying for is an editor. I love it. I know, so right? I'm curious your promotion techniques. So you've written mm-hmm. a book, you have a new ebook. How do you like drip out, tease out what's coming and how do you promote it? And then how do you sell it? Well, the hard part about erotica is that Amazon will not let you pay for ads. Right. You can pay for ads for everything else on Amazon, including murder and serial killers, but you cannot pay for something about sex. So or that's sex frustrating. Toys, just so you know, you're not alone. Right, exactly. <laughs> so that's frustrating, but you need to find other places that will help you advertise. And number one, obviously, is social media, but social media is fickle and you have to learn every platform and they change. Like Twitter right now is changing. They're deciding that they don't want to let authors um, publish their books like they'll they'll de-boost them now right now is what they're doing so you you might put your book on a post and they're going to de-boost you so that not many people see it whatever they got some issue going on with people who want to promote their own companies on social media so they're a bunch of assholes and (laughs) but you know learn these platforms publish the fuck out of everything on all the social media platforms you can Mm -hmm. i use social what is that called social jukebox I don't know if that's what it's called, but anyways, you can schedule um, posts on there that will automatically post to your Twitter and -hmm. it's only 20 bucks a month. So you can put like thousands of posts on there and then it will just keep doing it on autopilot. The other thing you should do is find things like shameless book deals. You can advertise on shameless book deals. They will publish sales or deals when you have a sale or a deal on one of your erotic books. And they're relatively cheap. Like I have an ad going right now. I think I paid 10 bucks. So it's just another place wow. to advertise. So that's one way. And, and I have a podcast, so obviously I can advertise on the podcast. Mm-hmm. But, you know, <laughs> not everyone's going to have a podcast where they can advertise. Um, I, I, sell, I sell ad space on my podcast for erotica authors and other people. So that's one way people can come to me. And advertise. And I'm mm-hmm. right now I'm running a cheap deal where I'm doing like $5 ads. That's really cheap. Nice. So, uh, you know, ad space is hard to find for erotica. There's a lot of hard, it's hard to find places. So those are the places I've found social media, shameless book deals, my podcast. I'm trying to think where else. Yeah. I what about with your own community that you've built? Um, well, basically I do those things. Those are the things I do. Um, Your Instagram. Do you do email marketing or anything like that? Oh yes. I have email marketing. Oh, this is the other one that I love. I I found story origin app. This is for people who self-publish and it's great because it's this giant network. It works really well. I'm under under my real name and with Ruin Willow and it it's better with Ruin Willow for erotica because there's this giant network of erotica authors on there and they self-publish and they cross promote each other in their email um, mailings or newsletters Mm -hmm. and you can join promotions. You can um, collaborate with other authors to be featured in their, their newsletter. So then you like Mm -hmm. do a swap. So it's, it's huge. I have, I think since I joined it, I think I've gained 800 people on my email list and nice. Yeah, it's it's it is nice. I mean, it's, it's definitely a good way to grow. But you do need an email list. Everybody, if you're creating stuff, you need an email list because these social media platforms are fickle as fuck. They are, and you don't own your following. Exactly, and you're right. And one day they'll show like, something, the next day they won't. And do you remember a couple months ago, Instagram did a big update, and a bunch of people lost like huge chunks of their following. Oh, um, yeah. mm-hmm. I don't know how much of it was bots, or um, I think within that same time frame, a lot of people that I knew in our sexy space, their accounts got shut down. Yeah, um, you yep. can no longer like it's not safe to use the word sex on Instagram. So a lot you'll oh, see a yeah. lot of like mm-hmm. s forward slash x or s x x or things that we're trying to figure out how to continue to say what we do without getting banned. Yep. Um, so you're right. It's fickle as fuck. 
Um, okay. I'm going to lead us back to some sexy. Thank you for the business <laughs> stuff. Cause yes, my business absolutely. mind gets like really turned on by these kind of conversations, but <laughs> we're going to turn other people back on and you guys, I'm <laughs> literally like losing my shirt. I don't know why it just keeps falling <laughs> over my shoulders. Like it's about to be down, um, which may not be a problem. That could be really fun. I know, right? <laughs> so I want to talk about ethical porn and bring us back to that conversation. I have actually oh, yes. not heard of uh, frolic me, but I do subscribe oh. to Belessa. So I, I follow sex with oh, Emily. Yeah. I listen to her podcast yes. and she's a huge, uh, sponsor, obviously, but that's a, Belessa sponsors her podcast, but she's a huge right. fan of Belessa and has been talking about them for years. And it turned me on, um, the men in my life make fun of me for oh. watching ethical <laughs> porn because they're of oh, course porn hub fans and they don't understand yeah, why you yeah, pay yeah. for porn. Would you <laughs> just like double click on that particular subject for our listeners and let them know what it is, why in the world you would want to subscribe to ethical porn. Um, and then, you know, you said you're a contributor on there. So let us know a little bit about that. Yes, absolutely. Well, for okay. one thing, the porn that's free online, you don't know if the people have actually adequately been paid for what they've done. So what what ethical porn really means is that if you choose to watch on those sites, you know the people were paid fairly for what they've done. They weren't um, abused for just getting their name out there. They were literally paid. And the one thing I really love about Frolic Me, they're a UK company, they have beautiful videos. I mean, they're just, they're so sensual. They're I've so I've seen beautiful. them on Valesa. They are really good. Yes, they yeah. really are. They're just gorgeous. They're just beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way I can describe them. And they do tend to have a little bit of a story. So mm -hmm. more women like mm -hmm. playing things like Frolic Me and probably like you said, Valesa. Um, and then, so they have all these amazing videos and they do across the board topics. And- what they also do is they hire people like me to write a backstory or a little erotic story to go along with the video. Ooh. So like I get to like make up, you know, maybe stuff before the video happened, add a story to the video or, you know, something that might happen after. So you get to build that and build it off Ooh. of a video. It's so do much Do they fun. overlay your it. voice before or is it written? How does that work? So that's written. So they have, they have, they, they kind of cover all the bases. They have videos, which is so smart, right? Film. Yes. And then yeah. they have the, the written story, which is, I have, which I have done. And then they have people also narrating mm -hmm. audio that go along with it. So they've got it all across the board there. I love and that when it sets the scene. It's like, yes. um, you know, the four of them were getting ready for the party and things mm -hmm. got really saucy and You're whatever. Right. Like I'm, I clearly, I, I just made that up, but it's not that terrible, right. but yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. I really enjoy it. I just, I yeah. just turn in two stories to them. I have two, I think I have two live now and I have two more that they, I've just turned in. So they'll be going that. live too. It's, I think because as women, great. like our brains, our brains soften with the storyline. It's like we make the connection mm -hmm. better. And yes. I think when it, I would say men too, like when you go look for porn, for whatever reason, like when you're ready to go watch it, yeah. usually there's a little bit of intent. I mean, sometimes you're just scrolling, right. and you're like, hey, that looks hot. But so usually it's like, right. I know this thing turns me on and I'm going to go to a specific category and then try to find something more in that, you know, vein of what mm -hmm. I want to watch. And right. so I... I enjoy the story to get my mind ready for what I'm about to watch. And yeah, right. I like the backstory part. And you're not going to find that on Pornhub. They're just you're like not, getting after it. Yeah. You're not going to get that. You're going to get, and, and often you just get the actual sex scene, you know? Have you noticed lately, uh, God, I sound like all I do is watch porn. And this feels <laughs> very, uh, like, oh my God, I'm burying my soul and everyone's listening to me. But I, know, um, right? <clears throat> I have noticed when I occasionally have gone on Pornhub, uh, I usually watch Belessa, but anyway, mm. long story short, I've noticed they do shorts now. So mm -hmm. you only get like three minutes and I don't yeah. know about you guys, but three minutes is not enough for me to get ready. I'm like, okay, then what happened? Like, how right. did this end? Right, who came exactly. on who? I need to see this, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, shorts are harder to, uh, yeah. I mean, unless they're like after something you've done or a fantasy you've had in your head. Yeah, it's- I, I guess it makes saying. sense because like that's how people are consuming information now. But if like it only mm -hmm. takes three minutes to get ready to 
get yourself off. <laughs> like we are speeding through life a little too quickly. Like exactly. enjoy the moment and savor for a minute. <laughs> exactly. It's so true. <laughs> One thing I wanted to add about the Balesa side, and I, again, I don't know anything about frolic me, but now I'm going to go check that out too. Um, <laughs> they make it a priority to, to tell you it's women created porn yes. for women, yes. yes, which I'm sure frolic me does too. Mm-hmm. Um, they make a point to say women get to choose who they have sex with on camera. So it's not mm-hmm. the men choosing. It's it's a consensual conversation that the woman starts with. So she she right. says, I really have a crush on Jeremy. I'm just making up a word, right? The yeah. name. I've all I've I've enjoyed watching scenes he's done before and I'd love to create a scene with him. And then they go like, Hey Jeremy, or you know, Christina's interested in how do you feel about this? Would you want to do a scene with her? And he's like, Fuck yeah, she's hot and she's like yeah i'm in <laughs> right. it and then balesa does this little um before each video that they produce there's like a consensual conversation it's not really oh. weird it's, but there's a like they get to know each other a little sometimes there's giggles there's like oh i've always had i've always been interested in you and, right. and so it's i think there's something too in um when women especially are interested in this. I don't know how many men are, but like there's something very comforting as well as arousing knowing these people are intentionally having sex with each other yes. for our pleasure. And then they do the things and it's not so serious, I guess that mm-hmm. I don't know how to describe it. Go check it out. I think for Belessa, and I don't know the price of frolic me, but I think it's as low as like $8 a month. And I know with yeah, them and yeah. Quinn, and I think Quinn is like another one that's $10 or under a month. Every month that that comes out of my account, I'm like, I am supporting an industry that I believe in. I'm yes. supporting an industry that takes care of their people. And even if I don't watch it or listen to it that month, like I feel good knowing I'm supporting something that's doing good in the world for our benefit. Absolutely. And then she, the person who runs it and created it is a woman and she's very female focused, very women focused. Um, what women want. And so that's a definite thing that is on Frolic Me Too. And I want, I don't know, I I don't know if they're five bucks a month, they're under 10 for sure. So it's not, it's not bad. It's not. And they have sales too. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. The films are just beautiful. That's all I have to say. And they're just, once you watch one, I think you can watch little clips of them, you know, when you're not a member. And then if you want to join, then you'll get like the full 20, 30 minutes or whatever they happen to be. But they they tend to be 20, 30 minutes. Which is a perfect length. Like that's mm-hmm. what you need. I at least exactly. me. I need more than three minutes. I need less than an hour. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we'll definitely put links to Frolic Me and Balesa in the notes. Um, I don't know if Frolic Me also has toys, but Balesa does have a whole toys division. And I have mm. a handful of them and they are fabulous. They're really well made. This butt plug over here is not from them. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, although I do have one from them. Uh, yeah. And so I've really enjoyed like the level of customer service is excellent. I had mm. actually a butt plug that um, I bought and then never used and then it wouldn't charge. And like I had a whole situation uh. and I just texted them. And I was like, this is not working. Can you help me? And I had another one where it just stopped charging. Not that these uh. are not good quality, but you know, when you use your stuff, they don't work so well. Yeah. And it was less than a year. And I was like, can you help me? I don't, I want this to charge. It's like my favorite wand that I use all the time. And right. they were like, oh my God, no problem. I'm putting it in the mail today. You'll get it in two days. You know, nice. like, um, they even made like a really funny joke about it. Like that's such a buzzkill. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. that's definitely cute. a buzzkill. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So like, if you're a woman listening, this has got to feel good for your heart to know that this isn't, you know, it's not a dirty industry. It's very clean. It's right. very, um, they do STI testing as well. And these women owned companies, mm-hmm. like they're very, very yeah. good about making sure everyone's safe and making sure everyone's having a good time and that there's actual pleasure. You're seeing real orgasms, which you're yes. not going to see on Pornhub. I mean, you might, right. but like you might, the intention you here know. is that what you see mm-hmm. is real. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know if they have sex toys, but I do know that they, they are also into having like sex bloggers write nonfiction, Ooh. you know, about, you know, learning about sex or teaching about sex. So they have, they have that too. So it's not all just fiction or oh, so there's they, an they educational have, component mm-hmm, about sex. Nice. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they I have people that. writing. Mm-hmm. I love that. I think there's a sex ed piece too in Melissa. Cause I got stuck one time in that category and I was like, Oh, oh. 
I didn't know how to do this. What's this? This is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay for all the sex positivity out there. Okay. Oh, yes. I don't, I don't want you to feel like you have to be on here forever. So I wanted to just check in with you. Is there anything that you want to add or close out with? Um, I know people listening are going to want to come find you because your content is amazing. Your voice is so <laughs> sexy. Like if you are yeah. listening to my podcast, please go subscribe to her podcast too, because you're going to have a lot of fun listening to her voice and her story. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Yes. I guess I, I, you know, I, I am across the board. I have erotica books. I have audio books. I have the podcast. So, you know, I'm in multiple different places. So, you know, definitely come find me. And, you know, I love writing stories. I love creating them. I love also educating people about sex and, you know, just like you said, sex positivity. So I include that in my podcast as well, because it's just such a wonderful thing to put out there. And especially for countries that are even more restrictive than the United States, that they actually have access through mm. probably just through podcasts that they wouldn't normally get access to, you know, because these companies, these countries shut things down and don't teach their people or they restrict them. So it's a, it's a great way to disseminate information. And I enjoy it. I absolutely love it. I love interviewing people. I love creating erotica. So I guess all my stuff's in my link tree. So you can easily find me if you go to my link tree and I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Like you said, I'm TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, share some. All the things. Uh, all the things, <laughs> like a lot of places. So I got, I found your link tree through your Instagram page. Is yeah. that where you want us to lead everybody, and then they can hop into sure. your link tree, or do you want to give me the direct link? What's easiest? Um, well, I can do either, whichever you. Pr- Maybe we should do my link tree because what if my Instagram gets shut down? For real. Okay, so I'm gonna make a <laughs> note. We'll put the link tree in the notes. I also. I made, um, I made notes. I have two pages of notes right here. So if you keep, if you see me <laughs> awesome. looking down and you're watching this podcast, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm not on my phone. I'm taking very detailed notes <laughs> because I want to make sure that all the specific companies that you mentioned, um, mm-hmm. the, like the best way to self-publish, I want to make sure that we're linking and I'm putting that in the notes section. So if you right. are watching this, you don't feel like you also have to take notes while you listen. I would rather you watch and just have a good time with our conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, And so I want to make sure that you have access to everything. So we will get that in there as well. Um, Given that you have so many things going on that you do, what's, if someone's listening and maybe this is the first time that they're open to being open about this topic, Mm. where would you have them go first? Like what's the best first dip in? I think it's probably, you know, I think Amazon is probably the easiest just because everybody's so used to using Amazon. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that's but which way to the... consume your information. Like you oh, have, you, you have your podcast, you have mm-hmm. short stories on medium. That might be a good one. You have mm-hmm. all the way into deep books that you've created. Like there's kind mm-hmm. of this sliding scale of depth. So where would you <laughs> right. have someone start to get to kind of know you learn more about this topic of, of, of erotica and maybe be a little bit more open to the, to having that in your life. What would you say? I would say the podcast because the podcast is yeah, free start there. And, yeah, and I have such a wide range of things on there that I would say that would be the best place to, to start. Perfect. I'll put that in our notes. It's a good one. <laughs> Thank you Ruin, so much for being on the podcast today. This Thank has been you. so this much was- fun. Oh, it was so much fun. I had a blast talking with you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. See you later. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.